The only person I heard from today was Mr. Holman. He had to work late tonight and would not be available for a five o'clock meeting. Sure, and I'm aware of that, but we currently do not have a quorum, which is why I inquired about um, if Mr. Scheller was around. I also anticipated that Mr. Johnson would be joining us as well. Um, Mr. Scheller was going to come to the school, and I can go out and look in the commons if he's setting up out there. But Mr. Scheller is in the commons right now. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Probably just a matter of getting his computer up and running. Hey, I lost it again. <laughs> I do it at work. Not that high. Hey, Carmen, would you want to just peek your head out the door of the office and see if he needs a little assistance? Oh, there, never mind. He's on. Hi, Bruce. May not have that volume on. His microphone is currently muted. Right. Oh, now we left the meeting. Whoops. Yep, he's gone again. And he's back. <laughs> Hi, Bruce. How's your volume? Oh, but I'm not seeing him. In the, I'm not seeing him in the list of attendees. We may still be having trouble. Oh, here he is again. Did you try your mute button? Let me just see if I can unmute you. I may have to stop presenting a second. Now, I let me just see if I can do this. No, it is not going to let me unmute you, but oh, you've got help coming, so good for you. I was one off. Yep. Hear me now? We can. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I was off by one sign. <laughs> Sorry. Excellent. We're back in business. All right. And we do have a quorum at this time. Uh, Mrs. Pecky, are you ready to proceed? Yeah. Um, I can't get my other computer to work, but we'll just do it on paper. Okay. I'm good. Okay. We will come to order then. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the Pledge of Allegiance to the all right, Mr. Pecky, if you could call the roll, please. Mr. Feller. Here. Mr. Forbes. Here. Mr. Holman. Mrs. Pecky. Here. Mr. Johnson. Mrs. Johnson. Here. Dr. Opper, can you verify publication of meeting? Yes, it was. Thank you. All right, new business. Item A, consider approval of revised calendar date for 2020 commencement. And uh, by uh, a 70% margin, 
um, we have uh, the July date as the preferred date being recommended by the survey of seniors. So that was every family got one vote. Um, so we asked people to work together, student and parents, um, multiple families, um, and it was 70% to 30% for the July date. Okay, so would we just then simply need um, a motion to move graduation? Um, the, the commencement ceremony, I wanted to ask a clarifying question. I believe the date on the diplomas is still May. And there are a few of our students that are going off to the military and they have asked, um, may they make arrangements with Mr. Wolf Graham to pick up their diplomas um, as soon as the, the, the May um, graduation date, as long as they fulfilled all their requirements. Um, that certainly makes sense for those that uh, won't be with us. Um, I thought we should probably clarify that, though. Absolutely. I mean, they're graduating in May. I would think that the transcripts are reflective of such. The only difference is that the ceremony is going to be pushed to a later date. And I certainly hope that we would not order new diplomas and uh, have the added expense. I would think that we would just continue with the diplomas that we have that say May. Um, so I, I there, their work is actually completed on, on that day. They, that is officially when they become a graduate. Right. Um, and then the, the ceremony can be held whenever you'd like to have the ceremony, which it would seem the preference is that July date. Because I know that July date, I know one of the people that was going to go in the Navy, I think he was going like a couple of days after that, something like that. So is that the same way with all the other people that are going in or are they going in right away? Um, I'm not certain about that, but I read in one of the comments from the survey that I believe they have to leave on the 30th of July. And then someone else had just requested, could they have the diploma itself um, right after it becomes official, even if uh, we haven't had the official ceremony? You know, if they participate in the ceremony, we can either pretend, or maybe they can bring back the diploma they were previously issued, and you know, we'll we'll use it for the ceremony. Um, I, I'm not sure what their intentions were. Maybe they didn't care to participate in the ceremony. That happens on occasion too. Now, if things improve or if they get worse, is that going to be adjusted as for what's going to happen for graduation during the ceremony? It, it could be, work? yes. Right now it's slated as a semi-virtual. Um, so the hope there would be that we'd be in at least phase one or two, um, which would allow group sizes either of 10 or less or 50 or less, depending on which phase we were in. Um, and then we would just schedule the timing of people coming to get their diploma so that they'd be spaced out. If we were limited to 10, we just have to space them out further. So if they pull up in a car, get out, get their diploma, get back in the car and drive away, we might have to have, some districts are doing it like separating them by in 10 to 15 minute increments or something like that. I think we could expedite it a little bit easier than that, but um, a lot of people are talking about their strategies, how they're gonna do it. Um, some parts would be pre-recorded so that we get high quality audio and you can really hear the students and the presenters. Um, so uh, the senior class president, uh, the names of the students being read, that could be done live or could be pre-recorded. And um, then we could live stream that. We've tried one okay. virtual with the middle school transition, seemed to go um, fairly well. That was just our first attempt at a little bit of a program format. 
and we'll do another one um, this coming Sunday night for NHS induction and scholarship. So we'll get a little more practiced in making it smooth when we're doing um, different live members joining in and performing different segments of the program. But all in all, I didn't think the, the virtual family night went badly. I, I thought it hopped along. I think we lost one speaker once um, where they couldn't get unmuted. And so there was a little lag, but for the most part, um, the rest of it moved right along. Are you familiar with what Shay Octon is doing for graduation? Um, vaguely. W was there something you liked about what they're doing? Well, they had offers for each day or one day per month, one in May, <clears throat> one in June, one in July, and one in August. And then if things didn't happen um, accordingly with the pandemic, they would make other arrangements. Just throwing that out there. I don't know how they can do that. Um, I thought maybe other people might have saw that, seen that. Well, I think it keeps, it makes things relatively uncertain in terms of, you know, right. planning for when something's actually going to happen. So, um, we did two surveys. The first survey offered um, May as virtual, and then the July date had two options, um, to be outdoors or to be at the elementary school gym. And um, the outdoor one uh, was the most popular. And then we had a follow-up survey number two, and that one offered the more popular outdoor July version or a September 5th version. They wanted to be back in the gym. That seemed to be very important to be back in their own high school. And um, with construction and everything being housed in the gym right now, and literally the entire school minus the couple of things in pods is down in the gym. So we have to have time for the remodeling to be complete and all the furnishings moved out of the gym right. and then the gym reset up. And so the soonest that Hoffman felt we could pull that off is September 5th, right before school opens. Okay. Just we tried from August date and there were no August dates. They said there, there's no way that we would be finished and moved out of the gym by then. So if they, just as if they held it someplace else aside from the high school, like on a, let's say down at the Masonic Center or someplace like that, is that an option or? The district um, rules apply no matter where you go. They'll find you. Well, okay. the, the district. Jay Octon is having their senior, senior supper and senior awards. They said hopefully to host them at the River Rail in Shay Octon. So um, you can look I at how they can do that. I guess that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I'm not saying that we should do that. I just don't know how they can do that. Yeah. I don't know either. Um, I can send you the K-12 um, rules uh, and guidelines. I think I read um, that already. Okay. Yeah. I thought I had sent that out, but just yep. wanted to make sure. But yeah. I, I was just curious. Yeah, I, I think they also have backup plans if they're not in a phase that would allow for it. I, if you like, I can do some checking with um, Mrs. Schweitzer about, you know, how their plans work, but um, right. I was they just, just with say that, They just didn't say in that letter what their plans were, but they said they would have alternative ones if it didn't happen to happen the way they wanted it to. So. so I was just on with County DHS this morning, and um, they're not recommending any in-person, um, at least through the month of June, and and they'll keep checking. We have meetings every other week, so. Okay. If there any, and if there are any big updates, I'm sure we'd hold a meeting sooner. So the September 5th one, were they hoping to get to a... Uh... 
level two or three, was that kind of the goal also? So you could get 50 um, people or more? Uh, they wanted a traditional uh, graduation in the gym with all their guests. So they that would be um, at the phase three, no person limit. Um, and they wanted to be back in the gym. So phase with those criteria in mind, September 5th was the soonest we could have the gym available. So phase two, you still want to be limited to some people at a time, correct? Um, phase two is 50 or less. Yep. So you'd still be, still couldn't have a full graduation at um, No, we'd have to probably do some kind of phasing. Uh, we have to work it out with law enforcement, but they said most people are doing it so that a certain number of cars pull up, um, the graduate gets out, receives the diploma, gets back in the car, and that car leaves. And so there's never a large number in the same place at the same time. This is Russ. This is Russ. I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> Hi, Russ. Welcome to the meeting. Um, or they could be spaced out six feet on the track, but once they've received their diploma, um, those people would be encouraged to um, move on, you know, get in their cars and leave. Um, and so we'd have to have some help monitoring that. So everybody has said, be sure you talk with your law enforcement and that they'll support it and work with you on the, the timing and teaching of everything. So I know the September 5th one too, I mean, some kids already be going back to college or going to college. So that might be a little travel for them. Mm -hmm. Well, some had stated that, that they'd already be gone and they didn't know if they would be able to get back. Um, and one of the other comments was just that, um, in this, I, I never know if it's the student or the parent writing, but that some students are ready to move on to the next phase of their life. And so um, by September, they would have already, they're already going to be doing what they are doing for the future. And so they felt, they didn't want to come back from college to have a high school graduation. That was one comment. How did September 5th come about for the date? Um, kind of late. They wanted to be in the high school gym. Um, and that was the soonest we could get back in the gym. The two dates were, I think, August 29th or September 5th. I don't. And because my screens are occupied now with other things, I can't tell. I don't have a calendar up, but uh, whatever that Saturday would have been, in the last Saturday in August or the first um, Saturday in September, um, Hoffman couldn't guarantee that the construction would be done. And it took us one week from the um, school buildings closing to demolition work beginning to move out of the high school and we all agreed that unpacking usually takes longer than packing because you need to clean everything choose where you want to put it um, so it took one week to pack up we would need at least a week from the time they're finished working to get everything moved out and back into rooms so that's how we ended up with, they felt marginally comfortable with September 5th. I have to admit, um, the personnel from Hoffman were still concerned that we might not be ready. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. It's gonna be nip and tuck, they said. So then we would need a motion um, to consider approval of the revised calendar date for the 2020 commencement.
This is Bruce Scheller. I'll make a motion that we move the date of the graduation to July 25th for on the calendar for graduation. Okay. I have a motion by Mr. Scheller. Do I have a second? I'll second that. A second by Mr. Johnson. Any discussion? Okay, we will then vote by a roll call vote. Um, just a moment here. Mr. Forbes? Aye. Mrs. Petke? Aye. Mr. Scheller? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Aye. And an aye from Mrs. Johnson as well. Motion carries on a roll call vote with Mr. Holman being absent. Item B, discussion of spring and summer events. And just a point of clarification again, then any student on or after the May date um, can pick up their diploma as long as they qualify to for have met all the graduation requirements. Correct. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, so I put together a table of the various events that would be coming up this um, spring into summer, um, actually into even early um, fall, and wanted to send this out to all families. We're getting just a lot of questions um, we know we've been working daily on planning things, watching the news, finding out what the guidelines are, but um, the parents don't know all the details that we've been working on. So we have some events coming up as early as um, this week, and um, we'd wanna get the news out tomorrow so that we can make sure people can participate. Um, so can you see my screen that has the student family events guide? Yep. Yes, yes. Okay, wonderful. So we already did have the virtual middle school family night. Um, coming up this Friday night, rain or shine would be a light up the night. Um, this is to honor our seniors um, for sports recognition. Um, many of them would have received their letters and certificates at spring banquets. And because we didn't have the spring sports events, um, the students have not yet received those items, so we'll either mail them or send them on the bus delivery. Um, so on Friday night, the Mac would be illuminated. Um, Mike Miller would be up in the booth playing music and announcing all the athletes' names, and that would be live streamed on Facebook. And there would be a video for our district website, so it would not cause people to congregate. Um, at the same time, uh, we got permission uh, from the city to light up Lindsay Park. And then all community members are invited to turn on their porch or yard lights in support of seniors at eight o'clock on Friday night. Um, and then the Booster Club, Manawa Athletic Booster Club, I should clarify, um, has banners for both the school site and Lindsay Park, um, just commemorating the special event. So wanted to make sure as we're going through these that you're comfortable, that you don't have any questions or concerns about our plans. Um, I did send the plans on to uh, Wapaka County DHS. Uh, Jeb Wohart, I think his name is, Jed Wohart. And um, so I'm waiting for his approval, but I talk to him regularly, so I don't think he's going to turn us down on any of these. Um, then next Sunday evening, the National Honor Society induction for juniors and seniors, uh, followed immediately by the scholarship banquet. So the Lions Club is giving a Chamber Bucks uh, gift certificate to each senior family. And I believe that'll be going out with caps and gowns on the delivery route this Wednesday. Um, we'll start with the NHS induction. Um, That'll be first, and we'll have students reading um, about each one of the pillars of NHS. And then um, the new inductees will be announced, 
and that'll be followed up then by the announcement of scholarships and um, people that are giving scholarships or organizations can either pre-record a message that they send to us, um, send us a printed message that they would like Mr. Wolfgram to read, um, or they can be live as you are like on this meeting and, and say the speech live. Um, and again, we'll be recording things so that we can put it on the district website. And then we'll mail all of the um, awards and certificates after the event because the students don't know ahead of time who, who the recipients are. Uh, eighth grade recognition, uh, we're looking at mailing those certificates on May 27th. Uh, students will be receiving their academic honor certificates, department awards, and Mr. Wolfgram will prepare a special letter to the students. <coughs> Uh, we're planning a student materials exchange. Whatever we have from lockers or that were in teachers' classrooms that belong to families, we're going to put everything together by family. Um, and then A through L will come on Tuesday, May 26th from 4 to 7. Um, we'll have them pull up in the driveway in front of the elementary building a few cars at a time. Uh, we'll go out. Uh, with our masks on and gloves. They'll give us anything they need to return to the school. We'll radio in who is there. Anything that we have that belongs to them, we'll bring it out. Um, we'll limit contact. If they want to pop the trunk, we'll put it right in for them. Um, or we'll hand it through the window. Um, everything will be enclosed. And then we'll do the letters M through Z on the 27th. That pretty much divides our student population uh, in half. Any questions so far? I don't. All right, I'll forge ahead, jump in if you do, or put a note in the chat box. Um, the end of year celebration for the elementary right now, uh, we're using Flipgrid to record little video um, clips, and then Mr. Cobra Rubius is going to put them all together and make one continuous loop. Um, and that video will be sent out to the students then, wishing them well and a wonderful summer. Fourth quarter report cards would be mailed by the end of the first week in June. Um, there won't be any new assignments after May 22nd. That's a Friday. Uh, so they have the holiday weekend and then all the student work should be submitted by May 27th. And at this point, no late work would be accepted past May 27th. Teachers will be preparing grades. Um, if students haven't completed required coursework, they would get an incomplete. And we will work with them in summer school or next fall to change that incomplete uh, to a passing grade. Uh, school registration, usually the biggest hit for that is getting your picture taken. Um, right now, we're thinking that's not going to be possible. So the date is still going to be Tuesday, August 4th from 9 to 7. Uh, that way, we'll have some people available to help those that um, may have questions, may need to phone in, um, or are working online. Maybe they need to be guided through that process, but um, we'll send out the registration packets in the mail the way we usually do. And people can either fill out the forms and return them by mail, or they could do the online registration. Uh, and then all school photos would be taken on what would have been the makeup day, which is September 18th, which also happens to coincide with the third Friday in September count. Always good planning. And new enrollees need to complete the paper forms because there's a much more comprehensive list of questions than the small updates we have to do with the online registration. Uh, summer school would be August 3rd through the 21st. And we're presuming we're still going to be in phase one or two. So 
Uh, the blended format is something that's um, become very popular. And blended means that we can have group sizes of um, 10 or less that would come in person and do some activities face-to-face -face with their teacher, enrichment or remedial. And then they'd be given some things to take with them to work on. So uh, just how frequently they come in person, we haven't worked out all the details yet, but that's the brainstorming right now because what we're hearing from a lot of the families um, in our calls that we're doing on a regular basis is that the virtual learning is really wearing out. Um, kids are really missing the human to human interaction. And so they're really looking forward to that. We'll still offer some virtual courses for um, some enrichment opportunities and some credit recovery. Um, but that's probably gonna be somewhat limited because we know, like I said, there's just a lot of burnout right now. Um, commencement you've already talked about. Um, the high school yearbook, um, we believe that we should have them by the end of June. Um, so we're looking at a couple of different things. Um, a scheduled pickup time where we put a few at a time in the vestibule here at the elementary and people can stop in and pick them up, sign them out. Um, or um, for underclassmen, uh, having them pick them up when school resumes in the fall. Things we don't know about just yet, but are still working on, is the FFA banquet, um, the junior high and the elementary yearbook delivery, and prom is working on a survey that should be going out this week. So we should know closer to the end of the week what people would like to do with prom. I think those are all of the events that we know of at this time. Nothing in the chat box right now. Any live questions? I guess I had one question for you. Is CWC you're the secretary for that now? For the conference? I'm done. I fulfilled my year. Okay. But uh, I saw in there at the spring sports, there was the option of moving them to July, maybe. And they were kind of saying they weren't, you probably weren't going to lean towards that. Um, that was decided and announced last week, I think, through the athletic director. Um, they were talking about a shortened season in July um, for the spring sports. And um, most of the CWC schools are not moving in that direction. Uh, they found too many challenges, as did we, with how to run it successfully, given all the unknowns and the requirements of DHS. And um, WIAA didn't give us guidance on how to do it. Um, so we're, I suppose we could change if um, they gave us better guidance, but um, they just said it was possible, um, but, yeah, I, I don't know how you take somebody out um, on a base from six feet away. <laughs> that was that was like one of the tangible, you know, um, some people were concerned with athletes wearing masks that it might obstruct their breathing and that may not be um, healthy, you know. So a lot of questions came up. Well, they almost would have had to get to phase two in order for that to happen. Phase one wouldn't help out, you know, only like 10 people, but phase two would almost be a possibility, so. It might be a possibility um, if you limited guests, you know, if you didn't have anybody attending like some of the professional teams are doing, they're, they may be competing, but they're not, they're not having any fans. I think a lot of moms and dads would be really sad, though, if their kids were competing and they couldn't watch them. All right. Well, when I saw that, it just gave me something to think about, that's all. <laughs> oh, it, it gives me something to think about a lot, day and night. 
makes me sad for the kids because I know it's a terrible disappointment for them. All right. Thank you. You bet. Mr. Wolf Graham, I see you're on. Did you have anything you wanted to add about, I, I know you were in on the conversations with the principals group last week. Yeah, uh, I think it's probably the most interesting thing is that there is no handbook for this. And there is, I mean, for every school, uh, there are some consistencies between the two in that nobody's doing anything this summer as far as prom is concerned. <clears throat> Graduation was a little bit more all over the board. I was surprised when I talked to Melanie that it depended on um, county is that Wapaka County might have something different than Washera County. And, and uh, the Tri-County School District said that they were going to do a virtual drive up. And I'm like, you better check on that because if you step into Wapaka County, that's against the law. So um, it's all over the board. Uh, everybody's trying to figure out the path. But um, I think the recommendation for the graduation to be in July is a good decision. It, it outweighed, what was it, Melanie? It was two to one, 70% wanted. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of our kids are just looking now and accepting the reality it's time to move on and they want to be able to check the box and and start thinking about where their where their next step is. And we did not have any action on that, correct? No, I just wanted to make sure that you saw that before it went out to the public because um, it's quite a departure from what we've done in the past. And I thought if you had any reservations or concerns or questions, I wanted to address it with all of you um, before we put it out there for the public. Okay. Next meeting dates then, uh, Finance Committee is immediately following May 13th, Buildings and Grounds at 5.30 virtually, also May 13th, Policy and Human Resources, 6 o'clock virtually, May 18th is our regular board meeting, 7 o'clock start time virtually, and June 2nd is Ad Hoc Recognition Committee meeting, 4.30 virtually. I am looking for a motion to adjourn. Ms. Scheller, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I have a motion by Mr. Scheller. Do I have a second? Second. second. Second by Mrs. Pecky. Any discussion? Hearing none, we will again do it by roll call vote. Mr. Forbes? Aye. Mrs. Pecky? Aye. Mr. Scheller? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Johnson is an aye as well. Motion to adjourn carries by a roll call vote at 5.41 p.m. I will see you whomever in a second in our finance committee meeting. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.